have another another episode and another special guest. Um, she is going to be working with us this weekend. Catherine, how are you? I'm doing well. Awesome. So we're going to jump into that interview as soon as we have these messages. Pushing the gas and along with the pedal. We not the same, we on different levels. You say the same, but yo, I cannot settle. I'm bringing the bass and you bringing the treble. Pushing the gas and along with the pedal. We not the same, we on different levels. You say the same, but yo, I cannot settle. I'm bringing the bass. Sé que lo puedes ver, difícil comprender, es mi forma de ser, real es ahí poder, se retiró el rey de reggaetón, llegó la reina. Awesome guys, welcome back again, this is the Elevate Music 365 podcast and I have Catherine here with us, Hello. how are you today? I'm doing well. I'm glad to be here. Awesome. So let's go ahead and jump into it. Um, you are an instructor here for the convention. Now, what style of dance are you bringing and what kind of helped you develop what your class is going to look like or what piece you're going to be teaching? It's been a journey for me. I'm mm -hmm. actually from Augusta. Okay. I grew, I'll just tell you a little bit about my journey leading to what I teach yeah. because I feel like it my matters. whole my whole life has led towards what I'm interested in sharing, mm -hmm. and I've always felt that wherever I am in my life is kind of an overflow yeah. into my work, and I yes. want what I share to be an overflow of how I live my life or how I desire mm -hmm. to pursue to live my life. Right. So I grew up in Augusta and started dancing at the age of three. Okay. And I took at Augusta West Dance Studio, also Augusta Ballet at the time. Mm -hmm. And I was taking tap, jazz, ballet, contemporary, the basics. all the yeah, things, yeah, yeah, the yeah. basics. And then whenever I was 18, I ended up moving to Los Angeles. I had auditioned for a role in a film to be mm -hmm. a dancer. Okay. I got the job. Yes. I moved to L.A. and thought I was going to be working for about three months. Mm -hmm. They cast too many dancers. So I was an extra. I had one. And I had moved my whole life <laughs> into L.A. Way. And um, I was just kind of living there with a choreographer that I knew, knew a yeah, little yeah, yeah. Um, at the time. And was kind of pursuing this professional dance career, which I didn't really know much about or right. what it even was. Right. But uh, and we can kind of get into the details of everything that happened. Yeah, because I honestly want to start off with that. Like, Do you? I, yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, and we'll get to what I'm sharing because we'll it that. leads to that. Yeah, let's start off with that then. Yeah. So I was 18 years old, okay. and I moved to LA. I I had a friend or two, maybe one that went to UCLA, mm -hmm. one that went to Loyola Marymount, but I didn't really know anyone. Yeah. And so I'm coming from Augusta, Georgia, which right. isn't the tiniest town, but it's nothing like L.A. Absolutely. So I moved out. I'm living with this choreographer. I don't have a car. I don't know anyone. Right. Really. And you're in L.A. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm taking the bus back and forth to the dance studio. Yeah. And I'm taking four to five classes every day. Yeah. And I'm trying to get to know people. And I was someone that I'm very sensitive. I used to be very shy. Yeah. So it was big for me to yeah. step into these studios and stand next to people and just be like, hey, I'm Catherine. Yeah. I really like your energy yeah. and I want to be near you. Yes. Because I needed community. Yeah. And so absolutely. that was kind of my way to build it in the studio and so much happened. Do you want me to just share kind of yeah, job opportunity yeah, things that happens? Yeah. Yeah, so I was auditioning for about nine months, and there was, like, here and there little jobs that would come up, some that mm -hmm. felt like I wanted to do, others that were kind of would take me far away, and, and I, I didn't say yes to. Um, but for the most part, it was about nine months before I really booked a job. Right. So this is initially after moving yeah, from Augusta. Yeah, and, and doing that one day of work right. that I had. That okay. was for the remake of Fame, mm -hmm. a film um, – yeah, yeah, I know if I miss you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and uh, so after that, it took me like nine months, and I was taking class every day. I was trying to build community. I was mm -hmm. auditioning, 
Uh, I had just signed with my agency right before I moved out to LA. So it was all new to me. And I was trying to understand what this world is and how to navigate it, Mm -hmm. which was quite overwhelming, to be honest. And along the journey, I ended up auditioning for So You Think You Can Dance. And I auditioned three times. Mm -hmm. And by the third time, I won't get into it. It's a long story, but auditioned the first time I felt very far and disconnected from myself within yeah. that audition process I Ooh. felt a lot of pressure to like Be I, I, it's like cameras weren't. are in your face and mm-hmm. they're saying what makes you unique what makes you stand out and for me connection has always been my priority yeah. so going into those spaces I can start to feel really far from myself yeah. and yeah. my way of coping is just ca- kind of dissociate and leave yeah. my body and I would always be really hard on myself in auditions because if I walked away feeling farther from myself, then, did you then really I would beat myself something? up yeah, yeah, yeah. because I just wanted to walk into a space and feel like I could share with authenticity yeah. whether I got the job or not. Mm-hmm. So, so you think you can dance happened and I auditioned for that. And that was a struggle because I went in and I was feeling so overwhelmed and yeah. I felt really far from myself yeah. and I didn't get the job. I got cut yeah. and I walked away thinking, I don't care if I'm on the show or not. I just wanted to know that I could walk away feeling like I truly showed up yeah. in myself. Yeah. And so that one passed. I ended up auditioning again. I think yeah. my mom was visiting a friend in Colorado or somewhere. I don't know where we, not Colorado. I don't know where we were, but she was visiting a friend and mm-hmm. she was like, you should come join us. And it just so happens that So You Think is auditioning We're doing auditions. during that time. <laughs> and I was like, Mom, no. I already right. did it. Not right. doing it again. But I did. I did it again, and I made it a step further. But it was the same thing. I was like, I can't. Same process that I you were trying to get I can't find myself in yeah. this. And so that one passed. And then they were doing an off season. So mm-hmm. that was season five I auditioned for. And it usually happens in June, July, in the mm-hmm. summer. And then season six, they were doing during the fall, mm-hmm. Christmas. Mm-hmm. And so I ended up auditioning one last time yeah. just because a friend wanted me to go with them. They yeah. didn't want to be alone. And yeah. I'm like, sure, I'm not going to make it. Right. I've already auditioned for this twice. Right, right. I'm not even nervous. Like, I can just go and support you and be a comfort. And That's probably what it took, though. It did. And I ended up going in, and it was such a beautiful experience that honestly felt really spiritual for me yeah like on the final audition in front of one of the executive producers you're standing there in a room and this is something that no one sees on tv Mm -hmm. it's this wooden floor and it has numbers one through five Mm -hmm. six through ten and depending on your style they line you up on these numbers Mm -hmm. and they say it's all contemporary yeah doing around right and they play music that you don't know what's going to come on so it's all improv and they just say go and Number one goes out, and you may be dancing for thir- like three minutes, yeah. 30 seconds. You may walk out, and they immediately say cut. Yeah. So for me, I remember I was number two, and I just had a moment where I was just like, oh, I just so deeply want to feel like I'm like – yeah. connecting like I'm I'm connected I'm like dancing with angels like that's kind of yeah, what, yeah. what I was thinking about and then in the arms of an angel came on and it was the spiritual moment for me yeah. that just like all the stress all the pressure fell Third away times the charm. and I just yeah, stepped out crazy. and was like here I am yeah the purest part of me yeah and they took it and they took it and they <laughs> saw me yeah and then I went on to the show, and that was my first job yeah. at 19 years old, the first time I had ever had cameras in my face. Mm-hmm. And it was really intimidating in a lot of ways, but there was also a lot of beauty in that moment, yeah. that reminder of, like, it's the authenticity. Mm-hmm, that they're it's looking for. standing in me, mm-hmm. and they're able to, c- their humanity is touch- connecting with my humanity. Mm-hmm. And that's what you were missing, that connection. So that was kind of my, my hope throughout my wish throughout the entire process of being on that show Mm -hmm. was how can I stand in that honest face of myself and I didn't do it perfectly I struggled to want to feel like I was good enough I really had a lot of stress yeah but it was always that reminder of like at the end of the day it's that the purity yeah. of our souls yeah. that That's we're able to resonate with. Yeah, between anything. Oh, my God. So what advice would you give somebody <laughs> that's not necessarily going out for so you think you can dance, but they're going out for, you know, a role or, you know, just an audition for anything um, dance-wise? What advice would you give them? 
I think there's been too many rooms that I've walked in and abandoned myself mm. in order to prioritize the other people or try to be good enough. Oh my you do God. not have to abandon yourself for yes. anything. Yes. And you can walk in a space and know that you have choice in yeah. those spaces, even if something's being asked of you. Mm -hmm. You have choice what feels comfortable for you or mm -hmm. what doesn't. You can say yes, you can say no. Mm -hmm. And not every job is for you. Right. And if you're able to walk in, and even if there's nerves, like stand in the reality of how you are in that moment. Yeah. People will take it or leave it. Mm -hmm. And I truly feel like the things that I haven't been invited to be a part of, even if I wanted them so this badly, not for you at all. they really weren't for me. Mm -hmm. And maybe they were for me later. Mm -hmm. Maybe they weren't for me at all. Mm -hmm. um, so I think that's a really big thing for me. And I'm still working on that. Yeah. How do I walk into a space and not pretend? Yeah. Or not abandon yourself. I like that word. While being that's, a performer. Yeah. Yeah. So how can we walk into spaces, be professional, mm -hmm. because we are performers, but be able to listen, to differentiate when you're performing because that's a part of an internal glow and expression, or you're performing because you feel. Out there and what they would like or what they would yeah. receive. Oh, my goodness. Exactly. That's, I love that. I really, really do. I really, exactly. really do. So with your students, I mean, specifically to this convention, are you kind of pushing that forward and making that the space for your your class? You know, is that, you know, what you're trying to get them in the mindset of so that they're able to perform how they need to perform and not what they think that you want to see? Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Is I, that what you're pushing? Definitely. I think that, and so much even from there to now, mm -hmm. has ha I'm 31 now, yeah. and that was when I was 19. Yeah. So there's been so much that has happened up until that point that's really – encourage the way that I share, mm -hmm. the way that I teach. Mm -hmm. And I think for me lately, choice yes. has been really important Very. in spaces because I know for me, I know for <laughs> me as a dancer, I would walk into these rooms and I would feel as though I just want to please everyone. Mm -hmm. I just want to do a good job. I just want to be liked. And so there would be a lot of pressure around that and it would feel as if I was given choreography or I was given things that I felt I had to do it in a certain way to be good enough. Right, right. And it didn't feel like I had choice in that. Mm -hmm. So I'm not saying that all educators or teachers go into a space and say you have to be a certain way. Right. But depending on the individual and how they operate, being a perfectionist, mm -hmm. and a lot of dancers relate to that, yeah. it can be hard to walk into a space and yeah. truly feel like you do have choice no, really. to be where you are and to get to know yourself within a shape mm -hmm. rather than just trying to do a perfect shape. Yeah. So I really do hope to share that. I'm still learning in myself, mm -hmm. like how to navigate my sense of coming home to myself, mm -hmm. my sense of embodiment, yeah. living in my body. Yeah. And I've kind of over the past five, six years been re-meeting and redefining dance and movement like for, for myself mm -hmm. away from this kind of showy film television and yeah. performance, which I think that's beautiful. Mm -hmm. But can we have both? Yeah, can they coexist? Do you can think they, they can? I think they can. Do you think they are in the current space of, I guess you can say, performers across it, all platforms? So whether you're on Broadway, whether you're on TikTok, whether you're on Instagram, whether you're you know, at a dance convention, yeah. do you think they do coexist now? Or is it space for um, some type of growth or acknowledgement per one of the other sides? I think they can. I'm not going to say they do or they don't because mm -hmm. I don't know yeah. all the environments. Right. But I think it's actually a really personal experience. I, I shared a class today. It was very um, kind of improv, exploratory. Mm -hmm. There were dancers and non-dancers in this space. Mm -hmm. And afterwards, someone feed, someone's feedback was like, wow, I felt so safe. Like yeah. I felt like I didn't have to be anything. I could yeah. just be myself mm -hmm. within this space. And I reminded this mover – Mover, because we're all movers. Yes. I reminded this mover that I didn't do that. Mm -hmm. And that that's an individual's journey. Like yeah. she, like they that's said, what you chose. they said, I felt safe in my body. Mm -hmm. And I was like, I can't offer you that. Yeah. Yes, I did offer a safe enough space for yeah. you to explore and get to know your body. But you're the one that gave yourself that permission to there. stand in yourself. Mm -hmm. So I think that it takes just as we rehearse. We rehearse things and yeah. dance 
our pirouettes, whatever it is, Mm -hmm. so we can get to know them and they become second nature. Mm -hmm. So how can we rehearse those moments of spending time with ourselves Mm -hmm. so we start to establish what safety feels Mm -hmm. like for us personally? So then when we walk into a space where whoever's holding the space doesn't feel safe to us, because maybe that person's nervous. Mm -hmm. So maybe their stress is bleeding into the room and they feel they have to prove something. Mm -hmm. So instead of being a complete reflection of that stress, we've already had a felt sense of what safety is for us personally, for me personally. So I can walk in a room and I can feel the stress. Yeah. But can I also realize that there's more to me? Yeah, that there I is that find. felt experience, yeah. and that's what I mean by not abandoning ourselves to match another person's energy to be approved of. Got you. I yeah. love it. Oh my god, I love it. So, do you think um, that with this, and I'm I'm gonna just keep bringing it back to to Fusic three sixty five yeah. um, with this specific convention, the students that you have seen, do you feel like that space has been um, not just perpetuated, but do you feel that it's been a space that that you haven't created before since, again, everybody here is kind of different and you're from here? So yeah. now you're coming back to a space and you're teaching where you have a connection, which you said this is most important to you. Yeah. So do you think that that's kind of playing a part on the piece that you're teaching or a part of the choreography you're teaching? You know, do you, you get what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah, I get what you're saying. Oh, no. I can't say it's entirely different because mm-hmm. I think that what I bring into a space feels like it is similar in every space. Right. But I do think that every single person that comes into a space, we create this kind of puzzle or th- these ingredients mm-hmm. to something that yeah. you don't know how it's going to turn out. Yeah. Even us together, yeah. we're creating maybe a different energy or mm-hmm. feeling than your last interview yeah. or your next interview yeah. because I'm a different person and so when we come together it's like a chemical reaction right. we don't know what's going to happen right and that's so exciting yeah. and beautiful how <laughs> different that is yeah so I feel that way yeah being on the grounds that I grew up in mm-hmm. being in Augusta that's a yeah. special energy being able to in between classes step out and see the Savannah River and see where I've walked so many times mm-hmm. And then to come in and know that, like, this is a home space mm-hmm. and having people come in, come in and go, wow, like you're you've inspired me so much. Or like you've co- it's like people saying that, like you're a part of us, yeah. even yeah. I'm meeting them for the first time. Mm-hmm. And I think it's so beautiful that what I've experienced and the opportunities that I've had and the work that I've put in yeah. and my career is something Almost like a football team where you yeah. feel like, yeah, yeah, I'm on your team. Yeah. We did this. Yeah, we did this. It was kind <laughs> of that energy as I was meeting different people of like, yeah, we're from the same place. Mm-hmm. Like, like we're we're in this together, mm-hmm. and I'm so proud. Yeah. So that felt really beautiful yeah, to experience. experience. Mm-hmm. And then coming into that, it was like dancers from the area that honestly I've taught before mm-hmm. on other conventions that I teach on. So I had people coming in that kind of know what I'm about. Yeah. People coming in who've never taken in my class before but we're just in the area which Mm -hmm. is so special I had an assistant who her family's in Aiken Mm -hmm. so she was able to drive down and kind of bring that familiarity into my home space and then I was walking around and I was I was gathering people to take class I was gathering some of the musicians or artists that are there that would not necessarily call themselves dancers yeah Uh, also people running the event and I was like come on do you want to explore we're all movers and how do we strip away this idea of dance and talk about how we're naturally moving all the time absolutely your heart's beating isn't it exactly so you're dancing exactly your head's nodding your hands are moving Mm -hmm. your lungs are expanding and contracting so really as I guess cliche as it sounds like dance is life, movement is life. But it is. But it is. Because (laughs) if we're not moving, we're not alive. Mm -hmm. So at our most still state. We're still moving. We're moving. Mm -hmm. And that is dance. It may not have style. Yeah. But it's dance. And so. Structure or technique or, yeah, performance is still moving. We're moving. And so how do all of us, dancers, non-dancers, I think so many people can come in and be like, oh, I'm not a dancer. I can't do that. I can't touch my toes. Yeah. Well, even just saying you can't touch your toes, you did something. Yeah. What was that? Trying to. Yeah. What's it like to spend time with these Mm -hmm. things, Mm -hmm. (laughs) that these body parts, wiggling our fingers, like looking around and using our eyes? Mm -hmm. It's so healing. Yeah, it is. So I just think what I was able to bring in a space was a reminder that like, 
you don't have to be anything. Yeah. We're just learning what we already are. Yeah. And what we already have. Yeah. And together we're doing that. And yeah. I think that was really inspiring to have like ex military or yeah. <laughs> um artists or ooh, everybody everybody, everybody yeah. in a room Come in. looking around and just going like, Wow. You're right. <laughs> we did that. Yeah, yeah. We did right. that, and we took that seriously together. Mm -hmm. And so because of that, there was so much laughter and play, and there were also moments that felt really deep and personal. Yeah, I love that. That's so good. Like you said, like the, the energy that you are bringing is completely different. Um, but I'm going to segue into as far as styles that you've trained in are, yeah. are you know, that, you've, that you were getting your career started off in. What do you yeah. think helped shape you the most um, as a professional? Mm. Which one had the most impact on you and why? Mm. That's a really good question because I don't know if there's an answer to one. Mm -hmm. I think that I have experienced such a variety of movement in my life, dance mm -hmm. and non-dance, that has influenced the way that I approach movement yeah. and see movement. Mm -hmm. So one, I started out with ballet, mm -hmm. and that is a foundation. It's not something that everyone has to have, right. but for my form of contemporary, it can be pretty technical at yeah. times. Mm -hmm. And so ballet is definitely something that's influenced me greatly. Yeah, And um, it's really just having a respect yeah. for a lot of the foundation of where yeah. this art form came from and how contemporary developed. Mm -hmm. So ballet definitely jazz as well there's a fire I that i jazz. learned yes. there's a the fire sassiness. that i learned the funk, the in jazz and yeah. a sharpness mm -hmm. and a, an ability to really command a space mm -hmm. and be dynamic it's spicy yes <laughs> it's spicy. which i love which i would say is more of a strength of the studio that i grew up at yeah. tap learning rhythms yeah learning how to listen to yes. rhythms and play yeah. with rhythms and that helped me so much as far as musicality mm -hmm. and then moving into hip hop as well. It helped me to um, kind of even get lower into yeah. the floor mm -hmm. and feel like I could connect to this internal mm -hmm. groove and yeah. rhythm. And then contemporary was kind of the last thing that I connected to. And, and mm -hmm. what I loved about it being a very sensitive, emotional person is it gave me a space to tell stories. Yeah. So then I was able to connect to all of these different styles and, and incorporate it, it yeah incorporate it into something that's mm -hmm. just free movement mm -hmm. that can really be anything that yeah. does have a foundation underneath it of technique yeah. but i can really be anything and so i loved contemporary so much yes. and then once i moved to los angeles i started to kind of be able to open myself up to mm -hmm. all different forms of expression more improvisation yeah gaga movement is yeah. a form of improv that i absolutely love that has helped me to just experience more of an or organic experience mm -hmm. within my body mm -hmm. that I had never really had before it was yeah. it was more structured whereas like growing up again I wanted to please I wanted to do a good job so give me choreography and I'm going to practice it yeah. and I'm going to do it as best yeah. as I can tell me to just explore my body and I'm terrified yeah because I just you you've never been asked that before though I've never been given yeah space to, to go it. what do you want what do you like mm -hmm. what do you want to do so once I moved out to LA I was given more of that space but I was also taking classes that were helping me to train in mm -hmm. choice yeah to Ooh. train in getting to know how to move my body in that way and so that's taken a decade or more to feel more comfortable in and yeah but that has moved into authentic movement which is something that I've studied and I still study and mm -hmm. That's really a moving meditation mm -hmm. that isn't dance. It's more contemplative dance. Yeah. It's a more of a bringing the subconscious to the conscious reality yeah. and expressing that. Yeah. And so that could look really boring to a lot of people. Yeah. But it's like learning how to say if I'm sitting in this space, when I'm sitting here with you, I feel the heaviness of my hands and the heaviness of my shoulders. Mm -hmm. And so if I really listen, my body kind of wants to go here. Mm -hmm. But I'm also feeling like a pull over to the left yeah. side. So this, like, isn't choreography. But when I'm listening, my body's pulling me places. To where it wants to go. And that's a form of expression. And if I do that long enough, it's this meditative experience. And you're also witnessing, mm -hmm. which is a very healing experience to Absolutely. have another witness. Mm -hmm. So I started studying Gaga. I started studying authentic movement. Mm -hmm. 
which is a form of meditation and then studying meditation on its own. Yeah. That is studying the stress response within hole. my body. <laughs> yeah, just jumping into oh, it. Like more somatic experience of the body, like embodiment. Mm -hmm. Because I felt so far outside of my body when I was dancing many times. Yeah. Trying to be good enough, trying yeah. to perform. Mm -hmm. So I've been studying these practices to help me arrive back into myself. So is this newer? Like, I mean, because you clearly have had, have had already had it in you mm -hmm. to want to even go that route as far as, you know, teaching, learning, um, understanding dance. Yeah. Is it new? Did it just happen because of recent, er, because of experiences? Mm -hmm. Or was this something that you always envisioned um, for yourself as a professional? I don't think I ever knew, this is awesome that we're going here. I don't think I ever knew to envision this for myself. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it's been a journey of coming home yeah. and I'm still there, a journey of self-discovery and I'm still there, maybe mm -hmm. for a lifetime probably. Mm -hmm. um, but I don't think I really knew about any of these things. I just, I've always had this desire for connection mm -hmm. And something that I realized was that the more I was dancing, the more opportunities I had in mm -hmm. film, in television, uh, company shows, whatever it is, performances, mm -hmm. I started to feel my stress levels were getting higher and higher. Yeah. And I started to feel like I was building a reputation for myself that I was afraid I wasn't going to live up to. Mm -hmm. A lot of this was just in me. No one yeah. was telling me this, but it was my stories that I had for myself. And I was starting to have these kind of habitual patterns of stress yeah. that I would Anxiety, feel. Anxiety, nervousness, yeah. Giddy, yeah. And the and the opportunities that I was working for and being given, I had a lot to work through in order to feel like I could truly show up in them. Mm -hmm. And I wasn't enjoying myself as much. Yeah. And so I think as that, I needed this experience of being a performer and doing all these different styles and to, to have a moment yeah. of, whoa, this is too much. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. then once I realized it was too much, I started studying the stress response because it was like, I need to understand what's happening because I feel like something's wrong with me. Mm -hmm. And as I started studying our nervous system, the way the brain communicates with the body, the body communicates with the brain, I realized that the stress response is beautiful. Mm -hmm. It's what keeps us alive. The stress is response is what keeps us from running out into traffic. Yeah. It tells yeah. us to be afraid of that. It yeah. tells us to be afraid of a hot stove. Mm -hmm. And that's a really beautiful thing. Mm -hmm. I had just gotten stuck in this response of feeling like everything in my life was dangerous. Yeah. So Ooh, that sense of safety. Of right. Okay. The sense of safety that we're talking about earlier is something I hadn't established in myself. Mm -hmm. And I was looking externally to match the energy of the environment. And in the professional dance world, right. that can be a lot. Absolutely. So it's something that over time in exploring the styles that I had been working in and training in my whole life, I hit a point where it was like, whoa, I care so deeply about connection, but I feel the least connected to myself than I ever have. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So if I'm learning how to do a pull up or a push up and dance, I have to understand how to start, yeah. where to place my body, yeah. how to end. Yeah. I have to understand the technique and the structure. So then I started getting interested in about the technique of our stress response yeah. so that I can start to work with it. And that doesn't mean it's ever going to fully go away, mm -hmm. but I'm learning tools to manage it. Mm -hmm. And I'm finding that I'm arriving into myself deeper. Yeah. It's not that I'm never abandoning myself, Yeah. but I'm learning that there's an option and I'm learning to do it less. Yeah. And I'm also looking around the room with all of these spaces that I'm given the opportunity to share and I'm seeing reflections of myself. Yes. And I'm seeing a bunch of students. That is super deep. That, that is need super the same thing. Yeah. And it's yeah. something that I was never taught. Yeah. But now you as an instructor embody that. And now you're sitting there. So I, I almost want to see five, ten years from now down the line, you know, all the students that you've touched or even been in the same room with. And they kind of take that and like really embody it. Because honestly, as a dancer, if you do learn to keep yourself in those situations, you know, not lose your, not become disconnected to yourself, because that can often happen, even outside yeah, of dance. Everywhere. Um, I think you become so much stronger, like, mentally. Like, it turns you into a different type of, um, I guess you can say, 
person or a human or the way you process emotion or the way you process movement anyways, you know, you'll find everything to be beautiful or everything to have some type of, um, some type of gravitation towards, I can't Mm -hmm. put it into words, but you feel, do you feel Mm -hmm. what I'm, I'm, I'm getting at? Mm -hmm. So it's almost like, I haven't seen that type of instruction from choreographers, you know, it's always, this is what the choreo should look like. This is what we're doing today. This is what's going on. And it's nothing wrong with it. Mm-hmm. Um, I just think this is a more, I don't want to say holistic way, mm-hmm. almost kind of. of, yeah, almost of um, of dance and performance. Yeah. So how do you take that from the classroom to the stage? Yeah. What does that look good, like? That's a good question. How do you take that? Because this now is you something, have multiple. This is something, every t- when you're talking, I just kept seeing the word availability. Yeah. It creates availability, availability. Yeah. Um, that's a good question. It's something that I'm still working with okay. and it's still like I'm in process and as I'm, I'm developing things to share as I'm learning them for mm-hmm. myself. And that's been a really beautiful thing yeah. and also a challenging thing of like, wow, I'm redefining so many things in my life and I'm sharing as I do it. So learning how to share while being in process, like a gray space yeah. of redefining things but still learning how to be like, okay, I don't, I, I'm not fully connecting to what I used to connect to, and I'm still trying to embody what I'm working mm-hmm, on over here. So mm-hmm. how do I share that? And it's naturally overflowing in mm-hmm. time. But I think the more that that's practiced, I think it becomes more second nature. The yeah. more that I can, I was with uh, an assistant, Mallory, this morning, and this morning we were just doing this little segment. It's like the news was there, and mm-hmm. we're doing this segment. 45 seconds it wasn't a big thing mm-hmm. but I think it's interesting to notice how we were just kind of improving. we were doing this body scan where it was like she starts at her it was her hands mm-hmm. and then I was doing my feet so we were doing yeah. the opposite right. she would move her hands I would move my feet she'd move her elbows I'd move my knees yeah she yeah. would go up and move her pelvis and like rib cage. so we were just yeah. doing the opposite scan. oh whatever one yeah and we were doing it not on the stage in front of the camera And then the moment we went on stage, I saw this look in her eye. I hope she's okay with me sharing this. I'm sure she is. I I saw this look (laughs) in her eyes that was like, it was like, okay, we're on. And she was like, and then I immediately just, I put my hands on my heart and I closed my eyes because we Uh co-regulate. So an energy that I have within my system, Mm -hmm. so you can feel it too. If you're stressed and you're holding an interview, I can start to feel the stress. Mm-hmm. If you're relaxed and holding an interview, I start to relax. And yeah. too, so we mirror each other. Yeah. And so we went on the stage and we're filming and I put my hands on my heart. I closed my eyes and I just took a deep so breath. She and she immediately it. put her hands on her head and yeah. she just closed her eyes yeah. and took a deep breath. And so it was that reminder of, hey, you just became aware that your system was on overload mm-hmm. and your system was on overload and you were about to feel as if you needed to be something yeah. for other people. And this expression wasn't going to be for you. It was going to be for them. Right. Not saying anything's wrong for being for them, yeah. but can you be for you and let that exude as out well. to be for them? Right. Exactly. Not just be for them yeah. and not have any connection to self. Exactly. So I think that for me, what I'm noticing, and it, there may be many different ways to kind of approach this I'm not gonna say answer but approach pathways of how you could process what you're asking I think for me it's learning to track my system Mm -hmm. so if I'm walking into a space it's like okay even before an interview it's like I'm not really nervous but I still don't know what you're gonna ask me so there's a little bit of that like so I'm literally sitting here and when I felt that it was like okay we're about to start I felt my chair I sat back and I felt my chair and I felt held by the chair yeah and then I just looked at you. I noticed how friendly you are, your mm-hmm. smile. It's like, okay. <laughs> I was like, I have water beside me. I mm-hmm. feel safe in this space. Let's do this. Yeah. So for me, it's tracking. When am I starting to feel stressed? When am I starting to feel okay. shut down? Mm-hmm. Okay. And then going, how do I support my system in that? While it's happening. Yes. And so absolutely. if I'm going on stage and there's a performance, obviously if I'm doing some sort of like high energy hip hop or yeah, high energy yeah. jazz, I'm not going to be able to like, but, Bell you know, but, <laughs> <laughs> but even going on beforehand, it's like you're walking on stage. Can you feel every foot as it's arriving? Mm-hmm. You've arrived. Now you're You've here. Arrived, and now you're here and the music's about to start, but you're here. Yeah. Rather than here we go. And I hope I don't mess up. And yeah. Blah, 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 blah. yeah. Yeah. So I think that that's what it feels like. Blah, 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 blah. So I think it's learning tools. Mm-hmm. So when you feel you're about to lose your lid, and leave your body. Yeah. 
going, wait a minute. Even if it's just like, hey, yeah, I'm with here. you. Yeah, I I'm got right you. right here. Yeah, I got you. Yeah, I got you. And starting that way pursues more regulation in the system, and that changes the approach. It changes how you move the dance. Yeah. You may, it may be a moment of like re- remembering your body and then going the whole time I felt like I left my mm-hmm. body, I wasn't present, but you still practice, you still yeah. pursued it. And yeah. I think in time it starts to become a part more natural. Of you. Yeah. Also, when dancing, can you notice the color orange? Yeah. If it's something that you've rehearsed a lot, you have it in your body. So there's things like as dancers, I can be dancing on stage and be thinking like, oh, that person's looking at me funny yeah, as I'm smiling and right, performing. Right. <laughs> so there are ways to be like, oh, this time I get really nervous doing this dance. So this time I'm going to notice all the shapes I can see in the room. Mm. Hmm. There's a number six. That's a curved shape. Yep. As I'm doing the movement, yep, yep. I see the hoops of your earrings. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. That's a curved shape. The glass kind of has rectangles yep. here. Mm-hmm. So then it starts to bring awareness, which is to everything pursuing presence. Right. And when we're pursuing presence, it softens that survival state. Yeah. So it's learning yeah. tools that you can use while you're actually dancing. Yeah. You can look I people love in that. the eyes. The tracking method, though, I think that's something. So I was in a dance organization in high school, and we had these these. Um, I guess you can say the the eight raindrops is what we call them. Um, cool, intense, energy, anxious, smooth, excited, nervous, pride. So mm-hmm. all of these were the emotions just leading up to, you know, a performance. And, you know, you, you got the cool, you like, you all right. And then you got the anxious, like, oh, my God. You got the nervous, like, wait a minute, do I actually want to do this? You know, you know, like, know. so just walking through it. And in the end, it's always going to be pride. So I think. It's just crazy how what you're saying is something that I already internally know, but I don't think I ever knew it in this way. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I think that's super, super dope, honestly. Mm -hmm. Thank you. (laughs) I do too. Yes. (laughs) So to close it out, give me your top three performances. It doesn't have to be a specific genre. It doesn't have to be a specific era. For myself? It could be yourself. Um, It could be anything. Just your top three. And then, of course, how they influenced um, what you do, you know, the style of dance that you particularly do, um, you know, in performance. Yeah. Life. This is actually a really challenging question it for is. me, it's believe it or not, because yes, I do. I do enjoy watching other performances. I get so much out of that. Um, but I think that my greatest inspiration is more so in being able to witness, um, the process of other people. Mm -hmm. So I think the things that influence me the most is like being able, what I feel I like to do is people watch. Mm -hmm. I create safe enough spaces for people to feel they can connect to themselves. And then I back up and I Mm -hmm. people watch. And so I think what inspires me the most is that people watching. Yeah. It's being in environments and seeing how people communicate or don't communicate yeah. with one another yeah or how they react or don't react it's being yeah. in spaces with arguments mm-hmm. being in spaces where people are really seem really connected mm-hmm. um watching children yeah watching how they play together yeah watching when they get overwhelmed and how they manage that mm-hmm. and how they're taught to manage that watching animals yeah and how they interact in nature mm-hmm. with each other So I can't, I'm changing the question, but I can't necessarily say that there's these performances that have just really impacted how I see the world. Yes, there have been some, but I think the thing that I'm the most inspired by is the process process of nature, Mm -hmm. people, animals, watching a tree blow in the wind, like really learning from the things that have even come before us are happening around you and contemplating them. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. I can literally look at a glass of water, and if I spend enough time with it, I can realize something about myself. Yeah, I can see myself in it. Mm-hmm. I can see, even looking in this glass, I see that without the glass, the water wouldn't have a shape. Yeah. So it's like, which spaces in my life are am I allowing to contain me or shape yeah. me yeah. or mold me? Yeah. Which spaces in my life am I creating a container for other people to be molded mm-hmm. or shaped? So that was just an example. Yeah. Yeah. But like, it's the things in my environment that I think deeply inspire a contemplation that leads me to what it is that so I want to share. it sounds like it's endless, to be honest. It's endless. Because it could be anything. <laughs> it could be anything. That shapes that, which is pretty dope. Because, again, 
you could be in a space that you aren't too much familiar with and you're able to pick something out to to kind of get back inside yourself, you know, Mm -hmm. just to push it back out to your students. Mm -hmm. Like you said, you're still learning. So it's a great area for you too. Yeah. That is so dope. (laughs) That is so dope. Well, listen, Catherine, we're so thankful to have you with us today. Guys, make sure you go ahead and check her out. Listen, you have another class today. Are you done for today? I'm done for today. I'm all done. Yes. All done. Awesome. Well, listen, thanks for tuning in to the Elevate Music 365 podcast. I'm Cena Diaz.